A few weeks ago, I made methyl acetate as the first step in my synthesis of acetic anhydride. My synthesis route for acetic anhydride is the reaction between acetic acid and acetyl iodide. Acetyl iodide is formed by the catalytic carbonylation of methyl iodide, and my idea is to form the acetic anhydride and methyl iodide concurrently by the action of lithium iodide on methyl acetate. For this to work, I needed to make the lithium iodide since it's not really something you can buy. The obvious route is to react hydroiodic acid with lithium carbonate, but I feel like I'd get in trouble for making hydroiodic acid on here, so I looked for something else. What I found is that lithium iodide can also be made by the direct reaction between lithium hydroxide and elemental iodine. The only issue is, I don't have lithium hydroxide either, so I first need to make it by reacting lithium carbonate with calcium hydroxide. I mixed 37 grams of both in cold water for about an hour, and this will yield lithium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is completely insoluble, so this is filtered off and the filtrate is brought to a boil. This will cause any calcium hydroxide or lithium carbonate that might have slipped through to recrystallize due to their retrograde solubility. The solution is filtered again to remove those, and then the filtrate is boiled down to crystallize my mostly pure lithium hydroxide. The lithium hydroxide crystals are then transferred to a vacuum filter and washed thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol. I pull a vacuum on these for about 5 minutes to get them as dry as possible before desiccating for 24 hours. At that point I'm left with my pure, dry lithium hydroxide crystals and I got a yield of 19.64 grams which represents an 82% yield. Now that I finally have lithium hydroxide, I can make lithium iodide. And my first step to do that is to dissolve 2 grams of my lithium hydroxide in distilled water. To this I add 9.5 grams of elemental iodine which represents an excess of the lithium hydroxide. This is because iodine has an enormous molar mass relative to lithium, which I find interesting. In any case, the solution turns a bright yellow upon the addition of the iodine due to the formation of the triiodide ion. To get rid of this and favor the formation of my product, I add hydrogen peroxide until the solution clears up. When the solution goes clear, it means all of the iodine has been used up and the reaction is complete. At that point, I pass the solution through vacuum filtration to remove any small pieces that might be remaining. This is because lithium iodide is extremely soluble in water, so any small pieces left over can't be lithium iodide. The resulting filtrant is boiled down until it turns a dark yellow and starts emitting iodine vapor. The lithium iodine bond seems to be too weak to crystallize this by evaporation, so instead I dissolve this in acetone and allow it to evaporate under a fan until crystals form. Before that though, I decide to do a qualitative ion test to confirm the absence of calcium. To do this, I dissolve my lithium iodide in methanol and ignite it. This will burn the methanol and any metal ions present along with it. The heat will energize the electrons bound to the ion and they will emit a photon of light to get rid of that excess energy. Metal ions in solution can be identified this way as each metal ion emits a unique color. Lithium's unique color is a carmine red, almost fuchsia, while calcium's unique color is a dark orange, almost a brick red. Very quickly, I can see that this is the strongest fuchsia I've ever seen in a lithium flame test, so I'd say this was a success. The reason for the color intensity is that lithium iodide is unusually soluble in organic solvents. This is because the lithium iodine bond is very weak and has more of a covalent than ionic character, which is why it's necessary for my synthesis of acetic anhydride. In any case, that's the entire process, and here you can see my lithium iodide crystallizing from acetone, which I then desiccate for 24 hours. My final yield here is 96%, which means there's likely a bit of residual acetone, which won't be a problem. I hope you found this interesting, and consider giving me a follow.